Hello, Jess 2 film here, and yes, I have The Last Jedi poster in the back there. Try to ignore that. I don't even like that movie. I just like the poster. And today I want to talk about Babylon, David Chazelle's latest feature film, the director of La La Land and Whiplash. This is written and directed by him and is just releasing in theaters. It is three hours and nine minutes. I know that three hour runtime might put off some people, but I like a three hour movie if it's consistently engaging, which I didn't have that feeling with Avatar 2. Funny enough, this movie is also an Avatar movie in ways I don't really want to spoil. <laughs> Regardless, this is a movie about 1920s to 1930s Hollywood. And there's so many movies about old time Hollywood, it gets kind of annoying. But I really love the angle that this takes. You see, this focuses on minority representation at this time, as well as a transition from silent films to talking films, which I never really thought of, okay, what are the difficulties in before when they didn't make these uh, sound films? And then what were the difficulties when they were first starting to make these films with sound? And it's really interesting seeing those processes, which are these really long sequences that do comprise a lot of the film's first half. And while there are slight moments where it still feels a little bit inauthentic with how the images they capture in the movie look for representing this past time, it's a thousand times more authentic than the feeling that was given in The Fablemans, directed by Spielberg, which, yeah, this just feels like a much more interesting and authentic recreation of that feeling of being on movie sets. And while sometimes there's moments where it's like, okay, that looks maybe a bit too crisp for the time that this is being shot in, for the most part, it feels pretty darn authentic in what it's trying to recapture, even more so than like A Fableman's, which came out earlier this year. Not really too hot on that movie. But one thing I love, 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 and probably the thing I love the most about the movie, even more than its story, more than its performances, the technical aspects. Damon Giselle... <laughs> has this amazing, uh, I guess, task of where I just think of La La Land's opening scene, and I think of this movie, where there's just these long takes with thousands of extras, okay, maybe not thousands, but like hundreds of extras coordinated, to just blocked with such precision. I love seeing long coordinated takes like that done so well, and there's an amazing, amazing original score by, let me see, Justin Horwitz. Justin Horwitz, who apparently worked on La La Land as well. And I love the original score of this, as well as some of the licensed music they use. They use one track from Crumb that I was like, I'm amazed they're using that. And they do like a new twist on it, and I really love how that was tackled. Now, the performances are pretty great overall. I mean, Brad Pitt in writing feels a little bit, I guess, uh, samey to some other Brad Pitt roles, but he's incredibly fun to watch. He also looks, just in appearance, a lot different thanks to the makeup and wardrobe of this film. And his character has a very interesting, uh, I guess, uh, thematic element to his story. While being a very light character, I really like where his story ends. The main character is Diego Colva's Manny, an actor I've never seen before. Apparently he's from Narcos, Mexico, and he does a fantastic job. And I really like the writing for this character, where they use this character to show passion over just making money, doing a job you love, or f versus doing a job for the bag, and also representation at this time, and showing the reflection of how minorities were treated and what his goal was in trying to get representation on screen. I really like that. I like that performance so much. Margot Robbie is consistently paired with this Manny character and they have great chemistry and she's very good throughout the movie. I do think in the third act, not only what they do with her character, but her performance in general just kind of feels a little bit forced. It probably is thanks to the writing, but I don't know. They just kind of lose some of that tact in the third act. And it's not only with her character. Like how this film uses certain characters who will appear later on is kind of disappointing, where it just feels like, wait, you didn't really build up this aspect of Margot Robbie's character, and now this film's becoming something different because of this. Thematically, eventually fit into place. And uh, if you watch the film, you might know what I'm talking about. In general, for performances, Tobey Maguire transforms into something else, which is just a really fun performance, not only with makeup and wardrobe, but just his whole demeanor. And then we have 
Jovan Adepo, who I hope I'm saying the name right, who is this black jazz musician in a time where they weren't very appreciated in Hollywood. And what they do with his character is extremely risky. And I don't know if I really like how it's handled in the third act. They do something and it almost feels like it's glossed over in a way. There's like a callback to it later and how it makes him feel, but then the film calls back to it again and again in another way. And it's like almost a little bit uh, tone deaf in how they handle that. Regardless, Giovanna Adepo does a great job. I just wish his character was more on screen, especially in that third act when something horrible happens. And then there's Lee Jun Lee's character who has this stunning start in the first half and then just kind of disappears. And she's another great performance and a very interesting character. But then I have to think, okay, at three hours and with this last hour kind of losing me with how sloppy it kind of gets, and it, it doesn't get extremely sloppy. It's still consistently entertaining. But like I said, handling and finishing off some of these character storylines was sloppy. Maybe exploring more of these supporting characters would have made it even sloppier and just a longer movie. So they are tackling a lot, so I can't hold it too much against what they do with some supporting characters not being featured as much. So overall, I love the technical aspects of this movie with an amazing original score, fantastic direction, and just these complicated long shots with impressive blocking. The lighting is something I didn't mention previously in the review, but the interior lighting is makes for some just gorgeous, gorgeous images. And then for the exterior shots, I love the film's consistency of the passage of time. I also like a lot of what the film's saying. However, the film faults with some of its messages in the last hour and how they're handled. And it feels like the last hour was just kind of rushed for some aspects, especially with Margot Robbie's character story. And the very end of the film has kind of a sloppy resolution, but I like the last, I don't know, two minutes, which is something I did not expect at all. So overall, I'd rate this an eight out of 10, and I really do want to rewatch it. And who knows, maybe it'll go up, maybe it'll go down. But let me know if you have seen Babylon and what you thought of this movie in the comments below. Subscribe for more movie reviews, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.